everybody. I hope it's a beautiful day for you. It's a beautiful day for me. You know why? I got my good buddy Jamie Kennedy in the house. How are you, man? Dude, how are you? I'm awesome. It's um, been so long. I know. I know. We worked together on the Cleveland show. Mm-hmm. You played Federline Jones, mm -hmm. Roberta's boyfriend. Yes, I did. Kind of a white wannabe rapper. Yes. Yeah, you did a good job with that. Thank you, buddy. How would Federline have talked? Do you remember? Has it been a minute? Um, let me think. He was saying, hey, hey, yo, Roberta. Hey, yo, Roberta. Oh, I remember that. Hey. I'm trying to think of a line I had, one of my lines. Uh, Roberta, Roberta, I heard you was a squirter. <laughs> Hey, yo, Roberta, Roberta, I heard you was a squirter. I Don't wrote that right that. now. <laughs> Sorry. Something like Wait, that. Wait, let's pick that up. Do it again. Hey, yo, Roberta, Roberta, I heard you was a squirter. Oh, that, I don't want to picture that from my stepdaughter. Actually, she's not blood, so, yeah. Well, never mind. What am I thinking? Um, yeah, man, it's so good to see you. I think we haven't seen each other. I mean, it could be like 10 years. Literally, we, you jumped on my Instagram live during COVID. During the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw um, you then. Yeah, so that was nice to catch up there, but so good to see in person. Feel you, you know, we, we oh, hugged. I liked it. Yeah. It was nice. You were urinating. I asked if I could help. You said no. Yeah, well, you know, that's that's my business. Yeah. Um, but, Try it. yeah, that's all right. So what have you been up to, man? I saw your name on the marquee at uh, one of the comedy clubs. Was it the comedy store? Um, um, where did I see? Yeah, I mean, I was driving down Sunset. And I'm like, I need to call Jamie Kennedy. I'd so nice of you. Thank you. Yeah. So, are you are you touring? What what, what are you doing, man? Uh, well, I got this movie. I did. It's called Don't Suck. Yes. Okay. And it's out. It was out in ten theaters, and now it's on Prime. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I did that. I'm on tour. I have a podcast. Hate to break it to you. I do once a week Sirius XF XM. I do a spot on a radio show here. Okay. I do a game show called Funny You Should Ask. I mean, we're all Ryan Seacrest now. Yeah. We all have to have nine jobs. I know. And um, well, let's break them down. Tell me about tell me about the movie. So this is a movie. It's called Don't Suck. It should have it's it shouldn't be as good as it is. Okay. And it's about it's a vampire comedy. And you're like, okay, great. But it's basically about a guy who's a comedian. Who has an opener, and then he discovers slowly that his opener is a vampire. He basically never got famous, so he begs the guy for the rest of the movie to bite him so he can be famous. Willing to sell out, willing yeah, to all take that the shit. evil bite. Yeah. yeah. And do you play the guy? The main I play the road comic. Okay. And uh, another guy plays the young up and coming comic. Nice. And um, it was awesome. We shot it right in the middle of the pandemic. It was an indie. Mm -hmm. A lot of good people in it. Matt Reif, mm -hmm. who's like the world's biggest comic right now. Russell Peters, Jimmy Schubert, um, Rick D'Elia. I'm leaving more people out. My brain is fried. You know what you're doing? You're dropping comedy comic names. Yes. Now, we, we chatted about this when we did the Instagram thing. I first heard of you back in like 19... 90, 91. Wow. Uh, hanging out with my buddy Rich Hanrahan a lot. Who, Hanrahan. Who I met doing the Judy God Carter. Bless him. Yeah, God bless him. He, mm -hmm. didn't, he didn't make it much longer mm -hmm. after that. Um, mm -hmm. But I met him doing the Judy Carter stand up comedy workshop. Well, and I got the book at the Samuel French bookstore. And then in the back, you could sign up to do the workshop. And basically, you get up and do five minutes every week for six weeks and then the sixth week you're in a comedy club we did igby's over on uh on pico wow. as our showcase night and yeah. so i met rich and i met chris frangiola there mm -hmm. and um you know we became great friends but rich was always in awe of you he was talking always talking about jamie kennedy uh because you had busted out and i think did you win a contest or something? like you you did something like way early where you you were you were a known commodity do you remember what that would have been? Um, that's really nice of him. The Beach Reader or something. Something in Huntington Beach. Okay. I want to say it was the reader. Okay. Did a story about me on the paper, and they put me on the cover of like the little beach. Oh, magazine. nice. Do you and have it? Do you have a copy of it? I have. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I have it framed. Nice. And it was uh, like the first thing ever written about me, and it was a big 
it was like a big blessing because I wasn't in the clubs yet. Yeah. And so it was, that's how I started. So so where did you grow up and you, you came out and did you start doing stand up in L.A. or did you do it somewhere else and then come to L.A.? Like what, what's your. No, I never. Listen, I, I people talk about like their their journeys and I was like, yeah, really? Yeah. Like everything I did was just trial and error. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like basically. I am how I am. Whatever you think I am, I'm a little bit, you know, off, right? I think enough of you to have you here and to call you my friend. Thank you, brother. How about that? <laughs> but, but, like, but like, you know, I'm like, I would never have a regular job. I tried to have them. I always mm-hmm. get fired or quit. And so around 10th grade, people are like, you should try radio. And so I had a fucking... You know, a ham radio. Remember the, what, the <laughs> tape recorder, the big ones. Oh God, yeah. And I would do voices in them. Yeah, yeah. And I would say oh, that kind of sounds good. That doesn't because I remember that ninety four WYSP in Philly had like voices that five o'clock funnies. Right. So I was doing that, and then I graduated high school. I wanted to leave Philly so bad, and my mom was like, "You can't leave." I'm like, "Let me just drop out of high school. I'm going to do radio." And um, she's like, "No." Long story boring. I graduated high school and then I take a local acting class. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'll just try this because I, I, I think I want to try this acting thing. Mm-hmm. And um, my friend's mom, who encouraged me, was a local actress. She did a lot of plays in Philly, but also she did like a, you know, Bill Berge. He was a linebacker for the Eagles, but she did a local Jiffy Lube. It's called a regional. Wow. Which was a big deal. That sounds like a hooker term, by the way, a local Jiffy Lube, a regional. Yeah, regional. Okay, I don't mean to diminish her. I've not met no, her. No, God bless her. But, it's, okay. but like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's a yeah. jiffy lube. It's just sure. a jiffy. While you wait. And so, I, long story boring, she's like, I got to, I'm doing something in Delaware tomorrow and I can bring you down and I can introduce you and maybe you can become an extra. And I was like, what? And so she drives me down, and me and her son, and we went down, and they said, will you cut your hair? And they said, yeah. And they said, will you wear a sweater vest? And they said, yeah. And they go, do you have these type of 40s clothes? And I go, I can get them. Went back that night, went down and cut my hair. Boom. For three days, they said, you're going to work. Um, I go, and the movie was called Dead Poet Society. Wow. And... I reach and I go to something called a craft service table and I reach and I go for a baby carrot and Robin Williams is dipping a baby carrot in hummus. Wow. Is that a sex thing too? Or No, it's just hummus. Okay. But the thing is, it was, if you think it's crazy now, like Fuck. what people say now, like, cause you know, you see somebody at Kinko's, people are still trip. I mean, this was the icon of icons. And right, it was right there. Right there. And I was working at a baby carrot and I was working at Domino's and, um, I was, once I had that moment, I know you're a spiritual dude, divine intervention, yeah. lightning strike, boom, this is what I'm supposed to do. I was on the set. It was like we had a little posse, and it was I, it was an older black lady, this um, young Chinese kid, um, a couple, a, an old couple, like a race, color, gay, straight, right. black, white, everything, and we all just wanted to be. They taught me the business in these three days, and they're like, this is what extraing is and all this shit. I just did it with Mary Tyler Moore and all this stuff. So I was just hooked. Nice. And so I finished my acting class, saved up money, moved to L.A., and started working at Domino's out here. I fucking love that, man. Thank you. And it's a crazy long story, but I didn't know anything of anything. But then I never wanted to do comedy. I loved comics. I loved, you know, Eddie Murphy's my idol, Rodney, Carlin. I had no idea, and it was only because I couldn't get anywhere as an actor mm. so comedy like you got to try comedy because at least you're it's performative you're well yeah it. you're 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 can get a result yeah so it's like you go out and no one sees you and then but you got two laughs right you build on that and so that's yeah literally that's how i started did you did did you have an interaction with robin williams did you say hey or did he say you I had know, one did interaction Nanu, Nanu, or well <laughs> kind of and i had one interaction it's in my book that i wrote called wannabe years ago okay and um, Nick Swartzen, who's my buddy, mm-hmm. always makes fun of me about it because I was there and I do the thing that you do and you shouldn't do. And people do it to me now, but I, it was got to be way worse when I did it. Right. And I was, Robin was there and he was coming around the corner. I go, hey, yo, Mork. Oh, fuck. I go, Mork. 
Oh, no, you didn't. Yes, did you? I did. Nice. Yes, okay. I did. I said, yo, Mork. Like that. And uh, I probably hit my guts. And I kind of said it like that off Billy, you right. know, greasy 18 year old. Right. Yo, Mork. Like a Nick to this day. Will That's make, awesome. I'll be at like, I'll be at the Golden Globes and Nick will come up to me. Hey, yo, Mork. Like he'll. What did, what did Mork do? Um, He just looked at me and just kept walking. And I apologize to him and his family for it now. And but I'll tell you what, there was like a, some English first AD, and I'm not kidding, bro. Like two hours later, they go, um, a message to background. Please do not bother Mr. Williams. He's very focused. He's doing his work. Like there was a fucking That's, bullhorn. You should bro. do voices, man. I should. That's I, a good one. Oh, thank you. I, I have like to practice that. a little out of. I'm a little out of rusty. You were always very good. So I, dude, I'm not kidding. And then after that, I just. But I didn't know, dude. It was like seeing an alien. You know what I mean? Literally. Like it's an. It's <laughs> fucking from Ork, dude. Shazbot. Well, so uh, so you came out of here and started doing stand up. So when you when you do stand up, you said you don't really write jokes; you just perform. Like, how do you prepare for stand up? What is your? Do well, you... no, I mean, like, what I mean is, is like, there's this whole, like, I grew up with like Eddie Murphy. You know, he's a god. I grew right. up with Richard Pryor, Carlin, Sam Kinison. Yeah. J- j- Joan Rivers, I mean, the, the list goes on. Ellen, yeah. Roseanne, all distinct characters. Yeah. All amazing points of view. And comedy has changed. Like, you and I are from the same ilk, okay? I think we understand what we are. Mm-hmm. We like to fucking just go for what's ever funny. Sure. But there's a new thing now, and I love writers, where writers will go up, and don't get mad, writers. They don't, they're not really charming. And they'll just sit there and they got their horn rim. They'll be like, so what happened? But they'll write a killer joke. Right. And it'll they'll, if they don't have material, you ain't watching. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I respect them. But then there's people that just perform and don't have jokes. Now, I'm obviously... Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I'm, I always heavily relied on voices, act outs, and all this stuff. But, you know, I got to get better at jokes. It's hard to write a joke. But it's basically, you know, open the door. What's the biggest surprise? That's the funniest joke, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I'm saying is the, it wasn't like that. Back in the day, mm-hmm. everyone had to be a performer. And now you can just be a joke person. Yeah, and that's true. You know what I mean? Even, even Rodney was a joke machine. He was still oh, performing. God, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Roseanne had jokes, but she performed. Yeah. So that's what I mean. But I, I'm not the best joke writer. But also, like you know, another God rest his soul, um, Louis. He he told me, and he's in a brilliant a brilliant joke writer. He would go on stage. And if you rant a little bit, I remember him telling me that. And you find the jokes. Mm-hmm. And that's what you do. You find you tape it. Right. Cut the fat out. Yep. Oh, that that worked. And then, dude, I got to tell you, people, and you'll relate to this because you've done this for me. Some of my best jokes ever are people coming up to me, other comics at the end, and going, try this. Just sure. these free tips. Oh, yeah. Free tips. That's a, yeah. Like some of the best jokes I have are from the community, which I didn't ask, and they love it. I mean, yeah. that's – and that's those are people that just love the That's art. that extra eye on you. They can see you. Yeah. Like you can't see yourself. So. They're wait, But they're waiting to go up, right. and they're just – they can't – it comes out of them. Chris Spencer gave me one of my greatest jokes ever, and it just came out of them. And it's like that's a beautiful thing. You know what right. I mean? And that's what, that's what comics are. So Sure. But I consider myself – both. I consider myself just kind of like an entertainer more than anything. Yeah. You're entertaining me right now. Hope you're enter- <laughs> and you know what? You're entertaining hundreds of people. Right now. Hundreds. Yeah. Tens. Yes. Hundreds. I'm, I'm, yeah. Hundreds. Oh, hundreds. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Hundreds. You'll draw hundreds. Yes. Um, yeah, man. So um, other than stand up, do you write scripts? Do you do you have what, what do you what do you do? So you write scripts. Do you audition? Do you like what is your day full of? You you were saying earlier that you do a bunch of different things, like. Oh well, you know the world has been kind of crazy, just in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. But so here's what it is. My day is uh, I'm I sold my house, and because it was good deals during the pandemic, and now I'm kind of going through a midlife crisis. Okay. And I'm basically whittling all my stuff down. 
And like the only thing I have left are like everything cool stuff from movies and my clothes and my girlfriend. Okay. And a thermos? No thermos. Yeah, okay. But I should get one, like a Stanley. Sure. Car. But a power um, board game and a chair. Yes. And a, yeah. And I have like this and I have a few amazing artifacts, but I bought a server and I have like a couple of dudes and they're literally they're chopping up all of my my whole career. Yeah. And they're making a clips. Oh great. And yeah. I'm, and I, I keep that. like one master copy, but I don't need all this other stuff. So I'm sure. literally like digitizing my life. Yep. Um and so that's one thing. I'm picking a place to live. The next thing is I do a game show, but probably only once every month or two months. And it's called Funny You Should Ask. It airs every week, every okay. day uh, on Channel 9. Byron Allen okay. is the producer. I do I do radio uh, once, a, once a week over here at Sirius right down the street. Okay. And I do my pod. I usually shoot my pod on Tuesdays, and it comes out every Monday at 8 o'clock. Okay. And then I do a Patreon the same day. It's like one hour on the Monday and one hour on the Friday. Okay. Um, and then what I, about stand-up? Do you, do, stand up, do you I'm get doing up locally? All or? the time. Okay. I do get, you get up five times a week? or Yeah, I got five, five shows week? this weekend. Like last week I did. This is how crazy it is. I, was, I did the improv, uh, and then Mulaney popped in. Did all his Oscar stuff. Nice. That murdered. And then I went and did the store. And then Burr came in. Mm -hmm. He murdered. And I followed him. It was like nice to be able to follow two, you know, icons. Yeah. Insane killers. Yeah, yeah. Um, And that's just t both clubs were sold out. Then I went to the factory and that was sold out. And w so not always every show is going to be like that. And pa I'm, I'm not going to do shows like that every night. But I went to all three clubs and they were all packed nice and so and so then how long is your set like 20 what? minutes okay but then I'm on the road on the weekend i'll do an hour an hour 10 okay um but i'm you know it the business is so different now dude everything's so changed it's like i can make this i have enough for two more specials but it's like i'm gonna just what make them i'll probably put them out on youtube but mm -hmm. it's all about clips you know what i mean if you have clips that go viral yeah and then you can just sell more tickets i sold a lot of tickets because i had all this heckling shit happen to me mm -hmm. and so i sold out in florida right but um and to finish this and i'll go back to it is yeah, and i did three movies last year but they're all independent they're guys that come up to me and they have million dollar budgets right and you know, I've actually made some good money on the back end because you can make movies pretty cheap now. Sure. And if they get a good streaming deal. Yeah. And so I, I did two in Shreveport. I did one in Canada. I mean, do I, and I'm trying to like, you know, do I audition? I want to start it again, but it's like, it's so, it's everything's all. I mean, you're at a level. It's like, yeah, you like make, you can make offers, but it's like good if you get like a good, like it'd be nice to do something like a couple of guest spots on Euphoria or, you right. know, something cool like that. My agents, I hope you're watching. Not great. So it's like, I have to figure that out, but like everything's consolidating. I mean, dude, my agency got bought by another agency mm -hmm. and CAA bought ICM. I mean, ICM, it's like, do you know how, to me, I think the business is it's it's changed forever. Yeah, I, do you agree with that? I, I 100%, it's man. it's not it's not it's so different, dude. Yeah, I mean, I've been pretty lucky because mm -hmm. I've been on Family Guy for twenty six years. You've been amazing, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, we did Cleveland for four seasons, and then out of that, I've done a few other things. You know, like guest starring on the Ted series or the Ted movie. I'm on the Orville as a recurring alien, you know, a lot of stuff that's born straight out of that stuff. So I've gotten to dabble and do other things. I actually wrote and shot a pilot in 2016 that um, that I think I talked to you about. That's the last time we got together on Third Street at some little sushi place. Mm. Um, and that was, I think, right around then, 2015, 2016. Uh, we had a little hangout and uh, I think I was telling you about it and just trying to figure out how to get it made. And uh, anyway, you made that I made it. I, you know, I financed it. I started in it. I wrote it. I directed it. I've, you know, all of it. And it almost sold. Um, and I got a great tax write off that year. But um, but it was such a great experience. It was like that was my film school. So this next movie that I've written, when we get to shooting that and you're talking about a million dollar budget, you know, it'll be a little bit more than that. But you just got to make your own shit. Yeah, you absolutely. So to answer yeah. your question about the business, I'm lucky that I've just been on this, you know, on this track with with Family Guy and and you know and that stuff. But mm -hmm. 
it's allowing me the freedom to do what I want to do, which is, is this, I, I love doing this, this podcast and it's fun talking to people, but it's not really, you know, the art that I'm, you know, that is, is, is sort of burning inside me to, to make, you know, this is fun and I like hanging out and it, it gets ideas going. Um, so yeah, so the business definitely has changed. I want to go make my own shit and put it out you know like if if yeah. people see it like honestly this thing this this podcast is not the highest viewed thing you just start i don't care yeah it's like i'm just doing what i want to do and it's going to live out there forever and if i do something or if people find it then then it will have its life but mm -hmm. it's uh it's all good man i mean we're all gonna fucking die may as well just do what you want to do yeah and that's what i think it's like i just want to do my stuff too and um I don't want I it's like I don't know any executive who could tell me anything. Do you know what I mean? Like sure. I can't even really listen to a director. Right. <laughs> right. I mean only a few. Right. You know what I mean? Cuz it's like what are you going to tell me? I know, you know what I mean? It's like I've done everything. Well, if someone has a strong point of view of, and you can tell they know what they're doing, then you, of oh course. okay, here's what you need. Okay. Like um, I'm going to I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to uh, You know what? You know who's the most hands-off people ever I've worked with? You guys. Right. You know who has the longest and most successful tenure? You guys. Yeah. You bring in people. Well, we and, know what you're going to be able to do. Yeah, you you, do you do let that, people I mean, hilarious. do what they do. Yeah. You know, Kanye came in. Y'all let him rap. He wrote his own rap. Yeah. He, he took his time. Will I Am came in. You let him do their thing. I mean, we've yeah. worked with incredible people. Absolutely. And it's like you it's always the people that know what they're doing that let people do what they do. It's a, and it's a comfort level. Yeah. I think it, it's a, there's a um sort of a, a security in it or a confidence in it where you, you know, I'm not going to tell him any better to do what he does than he's yeah. going to do it. So it's just like, you know who to bring in to do what they do. Yeah. And but it's like, you so many people that are like, you know, I always tell people this, it's like TV, Jesus Christ. The, the, I've worked, I've been so fortunate to, I mean, I've worked with Baz Luhrmann, Wes Craven, David O'Russell, Tony Scott. And they were just like, Tony Scott, I mean, I'll try to do the impression, but when I got hired, he's like, hey, yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, yeah. He's like, yeah, you fucking do that, you fucking little bugger. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> right, right. And I would just do this thing in the take and go, hey, yeah, do that again, fucking do it again. Right. And and he was just, he's Tony Scott. He you know what he wanted. Yes, and he's Ridley Scott. You know what I mean? That's the, the lineage here. Yeah. And I'd go to his house, and he was just the greatest. I go to TV and I'm shooting something for the ninth season of a TNT procedural, and they're like, "Um, will you put your coffee cup down? You didn't exact. It was one centimeter off." And there's so many chefs in the kitchen. TV is so full of fear. Yeah. That's why I'm glad it's being disrupted. Because and it was it's a delight to work with you and Seth because you guys had your own little fiefdom. You know what I mean? And it was it worked. But, like, you know how TV is. Yeah, oh, yeah. And there's at these, all these people. I don't need to take a note from someone fresh out of Sarah Lawrence College. Right. Right. Unless it's lick faster. Wow. We'll be right back. Yeah, you have a guy named Jim Abbott on their team who uh, pitches with his left hand. It's kind of an incredible story. He was uh, born physically deformed. He has a uh, stump on his right hand. He pitched a no-hitter last year for the Yanks. And uh, I'd like to do a little impression for you. This is a... Uh, hey, hey, hey. It's <laughs> you trusted me before and it worked out okay. <laughs> so this is my impression of a fan in the Bronx uh, opening day after Jim Abbott has retired the first three batters. Hey, you know, this Jim Abbott's incredible. He comes in here, retires the batters, one, two, three, opening day. Last year, he pitches a no hitter. He's a true American hero. Now I like to do an impression of that same guy in the sixth inning after Jim Abbott has given up seven runs. <laughs> Go back to the carnival, you one on free. <laughs> Sorry about that trust thing. Uh... And we're back. 
Jamie was just telling me what pegging is. Mm. Anybody know what pegging is? Look it up, kids. Comments. Kids? Comments. Comments. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear about it. Peg. <laughs> Peg. She'll strap it on. She'll stick it in her husband asshole. Yeah, it's an act, I think, that uh, goes oh. no, but, uh, yeah. All right. I'm sorry. You know what? We like comedy. Something about that's funny. Yeah. A woman strapping one on and giving it to her husband is funny. Funny for to watch, but probably not to be on the receiving end. I don't think anyone's laughing. You could be. If your wife... If she was dressed as a clown and there was a mirror and you could see that she was dressed as a clown pegging you, you probably wouldn't be able to help but laugh. Yeah, but if she gets you and then you're just like... You know, if you're, if the husband is like, <laughs> she probably needs a bigger peg. Okay. Yeah. Or she could put the clown nose on the tip. Yes. Anyway, uh, it's great to see you, man. Great to see you. Six yeah. years. I know. Yeah. I think it's been six, uh, six, seven, eight. I mean, it's it's been a few. Yeah. But um, but how much fun was the uh, the Cleveland show? Did you enjoy doing Federal Line? Dude, Jones? I loved it because I just got to come in and dress how I wanted. Oh yeah. And. I mean, like, I just said Kanye. I said, well, I am. One, th I, You guys always had people surprised. I always felt like I was part of the family, even though I wasn't a regular. I was kind of a semi-regular. Sure. And I was talking about this on a pod the other day of how much I would go to Comic-Con and I would have panels for Ghost Whisperer, panels for my sh Nickelodeon show called Family and Chum Chum, and panels for Cleveland. And yeah. I remember Seth one time did so many panels. He's like, I'm going to let you do the... Uh, Heavy lifting on this one. Right. And it was so sweet. Like, I mean, obviously he's there and wants to see him, but he he was so busy and it was like cool to like be in Hall H and sit with you guys. Yeah. Hell yeah. And um, I just loved it. Like, I remember one time I was there, it was Amber Heard was doing a guest spot and Brian Cranston. Yeah. All three of us. Yeah. And... I mean, it's it was it was it was it was incredible. It was so much fun. You that that wonderful girl at the front desk. Yeah. And cat. Yeah, cat. Oh my god, I love cat. I yeah. haven't seen her forever. Linda but, Lamontagne. Yes, Linda, that thing. amazing casting. Director. She brought in some people. Man. She brought in. She dude. brought in Larry Mullen Jr. from U two. Wow. She brought in. Uh, she got me Johnny Bench, poster wow. over here that you can't see, but my boyhood hero, David Lynch, was our bartender. Wow. Um, you know, it was so freaking awesome, dude. There, just legends upon legends. Yeah, and um, Jimmy Kennedy. Yeah, I had a moment, yeah. but there was no pressure. You know what I mean? I would go, and we would do it until you would laugh. Well, you're just fucking around. If you're not gonna make, you're not gonna make uh, anything good if everybody's tense. I yeah. know, and it goes back to that thing of like Hollywood of like people overthink things and especially now content is everywhere yeah there's so much content yeah and including this i mean like i'm like why am i fucking just shitting this out because i like it you know i'm not I'm, well, i don't care how many people see it i'm not analyzing numbers i'm not you know it's just but it is more content so well it I is you guys are enjoying the content but you're shitting it out <clears throat> and you don't know there might be a nugget mm -hmm. in this shit yeah. That goes viral. A piece of corn. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, but why not? I just, I think, I don't know. I think we're just literally all going to be seeing in Ubers, self-driving cars, and they're yeah. just going to have LED screens on the whole thing. It's just gonna oh, yeah. Be, but, uh, and everything's going to be fucking Tokyo. In a while. It's just going to be just so much content. I know, dude. Everything's Wally. Don't you want to just go live in a fucking field somewhere and grow your food? Let's does, go. Does that does that strike you ever? Sometimes I think like, God, how fucking cool would that be? Just to be off the grid and just getting up with the roosters and, you know. Let's go deeper. Okay. I'm with you. I love where you told me you bought your house. Mm -hmm. I've gone there a few times since the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely looking at somewhere towards a beach because I want. I think the water is healthy. I'm all oh, God, into. Yeah. I'm into all this crazy hippie shit now that I didn't do before yeah and um there's a there's a tiktoker i follow called man with pot okay and he goes out in the forest and he has his amazing knife and he makes the best fucking steaks oh uh, real sound design yeah like, choo, 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 but like cutting it up and, just yeah. like he fucking makes his own bread all with a pot yeah and dude i'm 
all about that. Isn't and, that cool? Yeah, because my it's like I I somebody said this to me. A guy who was retired from the army, and he said the amount of psychosis you're seeing is not an accident. He's like, because I think people are losing their minds. They are. They fucking are, dude. And and he's like, we weren't designed to take in all the information that we're getting. There's just so much and. I know this is a fun podcast, but this yeah, man. No, I'll get story. deep with you. I, I get deeper than you think, dude. They, oh, I'm you. as fucking deep as they get. So I'm in front of like this is how it is. Like I was in front of Gelson's over here the other day in front of uh, Franklin, and I was going to the Sony, mm-hmm. and I had to leave at like fucking seven a.m. It was seven a.m. and like a beautiful like hippie chick that looked like she was from the seventies, like twenty one, but like barefoot, mm-hmm. not dirty, like homeless. But possibly a runaway waif, mm-hmm. and she's just walking around Franklin, like it's the night, like it's that movie with the flowers on the head. Remember that movie that just came out, A twenty four, a couple years ago, Summer, some uh, Midsummer. Oh, she no, looked I like that, okay. and she was. I don't even think she was on drugs, dude. I think she was like hearing fucking sound baths or something. Yeah, and I'm like, I see more young, capable people just loopy. May, I mean, maybe it's shrooms, but it didn't seem like that. She just, she did not care in the world that there were cars. Oh, yeah. And everyone went around her and yeah. she was attractive. Right. We got to be practical. Yes, but like usually you would just see that at Venice Beach. Yeah. I'm seeing that shit on Coenga. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone inland. Yes. <laughs> Watch out, Nebraska. I tell people like one of the only things I really do enjoy doing, because I don't have to do that much. I mean, I'm fortunate. I, you know, but if we don't do something, we're going to just perish. And I feel that comedy is more important than ever. And I'm yeah. not just saying that because I'm in it. Like, I do feel like I, the clubs have. It takes the fucking air out of shit, man. Dude, I, well, you know, comedy is the new music in the sense that you can follow your favorite artist and tour with them and enjoy them. And people do that now. And. Mm. They really, since COVID, audiences have been so giving. Like, they really want to laugh. Now, obviously, they're also super offended, and that's another side. Right. But that just makes the comedy zealots more like, fuck yeah, right. do what you want. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a real wild time, but people really want to laugh. It's a hunger for truth because yes. the, the best comics are going to just call it. And, yes. Um yeah, and where and what and what is that anymore? I mean, I think I know what it is, but that's yeah. what everyone's fighting. Well, that's all you can do is yeah. put out what you think, and you know whoever's going to gravitate to that gravitates to it, and yeah. you can't overthink it beyond that. Yeah, speak from your heart. Yeah, don't fucking think about it. Yeah, Just, you feel it, say it. Mm-hmm. You know, but you got to navigate a little bit. Like I can't just say anything because I do have a job. You know? No, I know. And it's funny because I wanted one of my college friends to come on here, and he's like. I just wouldn't be able to say anything real. Like he works in a more traditional situation where you have to play by these rules and you can't say this or that that might come across as this or that because that's going to bust the narrative of what the whole business is about. And so we're lucky that we can pretty much say whatever we want, you know, just a little bit of navigating. Yeah. You know, but I don't mind, you know. But you're you're still on Fox, so you're on Disney, so... Well, yeah. I see you're still on the corporate nipple. Well, yeah. And I mean, you and you. But the good news is, though, like I've always been on the corporate nipple and I haven't had any people say, oh, we won't hire you because right. of your beliefs. But I do. But I also do comedy so right. I can say, hey, man, I'm exploring. But I agree with you. We do have to dance lightly sometimes. Right. Well, to your point, I don't think I'm coming from a play. You know, no one's ever said that to you that you can't work with us anymore because you're not an asshole. You're no. not coming from a place that's so egregious, you know, no. and, and neither am I. No. So, but there, you know, there are very few and far between jokes that I would ordinarily make with friends that I won't necessarily say on here Yeah, because whatever, but because it's new world, know, the, I, the ideal life is just being able to say whatever you want to say, but yeah, you know, well, you we're, know, we're, we're close. We are. We're lucky. But if you really want to get deep, you know, the banning of TikTok is a very, very slippery slope. Mm. Yeah. Well, tell me your take on that. Well, dude, I mean, it's not owned by the big tech. Mm-hmm. It's owned by China. Right. So 
Um, they're worried about China having our data. Oh, uh, so Google is really precious with our data. Yeah. Apple's really precious with our data. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't sell our data. Okay. Right. When you put on a pair of sneakers and you look at the label, it says made in China. Yeah. And when you parents, your mom has a dinner party and her friends come over. She puts out the good weed. Exactly. So this has been in our life. The whole time. Right. And she puts out the China. I know. She I know. We reverse the reverse. Yeah. But, um, so, I mean, it's like, you don't own it. I, I think TikTok, whatever you feel of it, there are so many subsects and what I call verticals of things. There's food. Yeah. There's fashion. There's comedy. Yeah, yeah. And people share information. I sure. fucking see a lot of stuff on there that I think is really fascinating. Yes. So, wh why, why take that down? Yeah. So, to me, that's a... As yep. that's a beginning of a government playing yep. around your anus and saying we may want to peg you. This is the beginning of a government pegging. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I would not disagree with that. Mm -hmm. Unless Disney didn't. No, but to, <laughs> I think what is crazy, and since we're, you know, this is really what I think. There's just too much shit. Like you were saying, there's too much information. There's too much conflicting information. There's too much unvetted journalism. They, they're not facts being put out there. Everyone's got their, their take on everything. You could easily find a convincing argument that you shouldn't eat this or that, and then, you know, oh, you definitely should eat this or that. Like, there's not, it's just, there's too much shit out there. Or so you, if you can put the fucking phone down mm -hmm. and don't watch the news or commercial stuff, then you can just breathe and be nice to people. If you can yeah. find a way to make a living and, and have shelter and food and, and someone who loves you. Like, that's all you really need. It's so true. I find myself going back to those basics of, like, I don't know why. I feel like it's dystopia. But, like, I do feel like in all those movies, it's either people that get back to oneness with nature mm -hmm. while the tech overlords are here. I do feel like that is, for some reason, I just feel like because everything is so easy now, it used to be you have a scene, you get a, you get to get a tape, run it to the dub house, then get a messenger, and blah blah blah. So six t six steps in a two day process to get your scenes to a casting director. Right now it's just zip. Yeah. So it's like things are becoming like immediate. that across yeah. the whole world in many ways, banking, whatever. Well, do you think you can just turn the dystopia off by not participating, by not being on your phone, by not watching the TV? Can you can you live in the world? Where you know I'm going to go to the grocery store and I'm going to buy this organic shit, and you could even get to the point where I'm going to see where this farm is and see if it's really organic. You know, like you could choose to only put good stuff in your soul and in your brain, and only listen to classical music or the best music, no commercials, fine art, feed yourself with all of the the best things that have ever been made, and just don't participate in any of the bullshit. But do you think you could sustain that without the 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 wave of dystopia t overtaking you somehow? Um, your ignorance. Definitely, I love. I, honestly, you describing that is a really good vibe, and I think that's more important. I've never felt like that more. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I need that. Yeah. Um. But no, I mean, if you're gonna bank, you're gonna use your phone. If you're gonna yeah. use your phone in some capacity, you're going to get that stuff if you're gonna on punch you. in the gps in your car yeah it's, it's all of so it. it's it's it you can try to limit it but it's gonna that's be, what i did and that yeah but what i'm saying is it's so easy now our lives are very easy in terms of manual tasks yes convenient so it made me look at things and go well you're right it's literally just the basics you know what i mean get back to the basics just fucking hiking you know, oh, yeah. going for a walk. You were talking about the beach, the yeah. water. The yeah. water. Just I've been reading all this stuff. Sit there for a half an hour and just feel the breeze and listen to the waves, and you're a completely different person. A hundred percent. And I was reading this thing. Do you ever hear this, that cities are more depressing because it's all angles? Oh, no. Hard angles. Hmm. And now I believe it more because Robert, Downey, Robert okay. Downey Jr.'s house okay. in Malibu is all curves. Interesting. And I think that he's a totally good vibe guy and yeah. it was designed like for no angles. Interesting. And so angles are like I know that sounds crazy, no, but no. it makes sense. So it's all about flow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm into that shit now because the world's so fucking nuts. Yeah. I'm way into that. 
Yeah. Anything that's not real, I'm not into. Anything that gives me energy, I'm into. Yeah. Real energy, not synthetic, fake, you know, Red Bulls and Coke and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, a, it needs to be real because you're going to pay that back and that's going to ultimately leave you in a negative energy situation by the time you get over whatever false shit you've put in your body. Yeah, I agree So, with that. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm just, I'm about just being as real as I know to be, mm-hmm. you know, and that's turning off all the shit and turning off your brain and listening to your breathing and just in that moment where you're about to fucking lose your shit on somebody on the road because they cut you off and they're being a dick, just breathe. You're going to die one day. You're not going to fucking remember this. Fuck it. Doesn't matter. That's that guy's thing. I'll be two minutes late. I don't care. You know what this turned into? What? An ash ram. Yes. I like it. As opposed to a peg and ass ram. (laughs) (laughs) Jamie Kennedy, I love you, brother. Love you, buddy. Thank you for coming on. Great to see you, my man. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let's all get real, okay?